What's up, YouTube? It is your favorite Radical Leather Crafter, and I am finally doing it. I'm finally posting the video you guys have been asking for. This is hands down the most requested video. You know I like to mix the edgy kind of rocker stuff with the traditional Western. Really, I'm known for two major things. Big, beautiful roses, and what's the second one? You guys wanna take a guess? Skulls. Today I'm showing you guys how I tool my signature human skulls on stuff. This is a killer video and easily the most in-depth look at what I do. Let's jump into it. So here we have our skull. This is a part of a much larger piece that will be turned into a video. So if you want to watch the whole making of this thing, it should be the video that posts directly after this one. So if you wanna see that, give your boy a subscribe and keep an eye out. Now we're gonna get into carving it. So as you guys can see on this portion, we have this rose that interacts with the skull. It goes behind the skull and above the skull. So since we're only focusing on the skull, I'm going to kind of just carve some of these lines here so we can kind of get clear of this rose and not think about it for the rest of the video. Now when I carve things, I will usually start with important details that aren't necessarily the most important. I don't know if that makes any sense, but some of these lines here in the face, I wanna make sure I'm nice and warmed up and in the zone before I start carving the teeth and whatnot, just because I wanna make sure that I'm good and ready to go. So I'll do certain things like the jawline and these other details here. We'll cap this rose off the rest of the way. Now, one thing that I found helps me when it comes to kind of the more anatomically correct stuff, I kinda of like to wobble it a little bit just so my lines aren't super straight. So a lot of these lines are a little bit wobbly. Nature isn't super straight, super symmetrical, really, you know, round at times. So getting some of those basically like intentional imperfections in there are one of the things that definitely helped me out. Now we'll start getting into the teeth, which we can kind of erase some of these pencil marks just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. I'll typically start on the front two teeth, kind of work my way back down into the rest of the mouth. Sometimes you notice things like that where this bottom row of teeth is kind of going too low and then it looks disproportionate. So sometimes you gotta get in there and kind of correct for that and use your eye and use your better judgment. And boom, everything is carved. Now that the carving's done, we're going to take bevelers and give this some dimension. So first I'm gonna start off by getting this rose out of our way just like with the carving. So our first lines, we will just start out at this portion of the skull, just because it is interacting with that rose. Kinda deal with that, get it out of the way, and then we can focus on the rest of it. I wanna get as much of the big details out of the way so that when we get into the smaller ones, I can kind of gauge what to do. Now this nose is always a little bit awkward because it's three dimensional and pokes out, but it's also kind of a cavity. So you'll see I'll hit the real good depth right here where it's the most you know, forward, foreground, and then down as it comes to the bottom connection, it starts getting more flush with the surface. We'll come in very gently, kind of give this a natural ridge, and then taper it off to where it starts going behind. And I'm gonna kind of give these some chops to give 
this a little bit of texture, which we're not done there, but we're gonna leave it there for the time being. Okay, so that, the easy part, everything up until right now is easy. <laughs> You know, the only kind of real trick I pulled off is a little bit of taper and this kind of eye socket a little bit and this kind of flip flop angle. Now the teeth forward is where uh, things get real fun. And what I mean by fun is uh, really stressful and horrifying. Some people live and die by the molding tool. I live and die by beveling as much as you possibly can in a figure carving because it's gonna make it last longer. If I can sit here and knock in you know, the socket of this tooth here, it really looks like that tooth is coming out of the skull. You know, it doesn't look like it's kind of coming out of the skull. It looks like it is coming out of the bottom jaw. Getting these to appear as if they're coming out of the bottom portion. This is really awkward. I do not like doing this upside down the way that I'm doing it, but doing it for you guys especially on smaller details like this it is really easy to miss step and give yourself a tap somewhere you don't want a tap to go even lighter than what i was just doing is coming in here and beveling the lines between the teeth okay now what we're going to do is right here between the middle teeth i'm going to use pressure from my hand to separate the front two teeth you don't want it to look like either one of them is on top of each other and then basically we're going to move down the row of teeth using hand pressure i could tap this but feeling like this might be a little bit better for us right at this moment now everything gets a little bit better there's nothing on a skull that is going to look more obvious that you messed up than messing up on the teeth. And I've been sitting here thinking about this. I am going to do a hard line in here. A carve a little bit like that. And then a little bit like that. Okay, so now for my personal favorite part of doing uh, school toolings. This is uh, something I consider to be a little bit of an artistic liberty. Um, I will take, so the bevel on the eye sockets are this way. Same way with the nose. We're going to do the same thing with the nose. But what I'm going to do now is take the beveler and kind of just tap it like this. And now I'm just giving, kind of going willy-nilly with these bevel marks, like more of a cavity or a canal. It might kind of be a little bit hard to see now, but when the stain goes in there and once we do other details in those sockets, you're going to see it come together. Skulls are cool. They're tough. They're kind of wicked looking. So being a little bit of, being a little bit sloppy or choppy definitely gives a little bit more of an illusion that, you know, it's just that much more wicked and that much more cool. Now we're coming in with our backgrounder texture tools. Down in the back of these eye sockets, we want to give the depth of a, we want to give the illusion of depth. So we're actually gonna smash down all that stuff and come up lighter, lighter, lighter. Same concept with the nose. This more recess part, we really wanna sink that depth in there. So try and layer the skull with uh, fun steps and then unfun steps. So I love doing the eye sockets, but I hate working on the teeth. So I'll come back to the teeth. What we're doing is we're taking our uh, pear shader, thumbprint tool, whatever you want to call it. I'm tap, and I'm tapping between the teeth to give us that texture. I do not like being upside down on such a delicate, sketchy step. Scary parts over. <laughs> uh, that's part of the skull is like always terrifying to do. So I want to knock in these background spaces. You want this skull to pop off the surface of the leather. 
your best bet is getting yourself really good contrast. Now we get to just have fun with some textures. This is, the step that we're doing now is a lot more of our kind of soft layering and depth. We're not going super deep, but we are gonna try and give these details some shape. Kind of like how this is, but this is kind of abrupt and then you have this giant flat panel. So what we're gonna do is basically get rid of this awkward giant flat portion of the skull and try and make it a little bit more three dimensional. I'm gonna come in with basically just a larger thumbprint tool. Using it as basically a giant backgrounder that fades off like such, which makes the bevels that we already had that much more dramatic, revealing really how deep we have this tooling going. See, now this gives us an eyebrow ridge. This gives us that contrast there. This looks like the back portion of the head is pushed back while this front portion is nice and bam, right in your face. Kind of dramatic looking. Doesn't it look like it's jumping off the surface at you? Whew. Same concept with this portion out here. We're gonna do that a couple more times throughout here. We're getting some layers and some textures, making it just a little bit more interesting. See how it gets this to really pop. I always struggle with getting this nose piece to like pop and make sense, especially right between the eyes. There's so much different angles and directions that the bone is moving that this, this is always a relatively hectic uh, step for me. So I kind of take it slow. I kind of jump around a little bit. So you want this to pop because it's the ridge at the nose. However, we want this to seem more recessed. So I might do something like that. I'm definitely digging how that looks for sure. When I get to a stage like this where I'm kind of like, not frozen up, it's just always so hectic. You do one thing wrong and it changes the whole look of the face of this thing. So what I'll do is basically do other steps in the process and then kind of go, but keep going back and forth. Or to get edges to pop, you can bring them to kind of like a ridge, which will give us like a really nice natural highlight. I decided I don't necessarily like the backgrounding texture, so I'm kind of switching over to this one. I'm going to smash the background in and then get us some more line texture because we have so much more line texture. This is one of my favorite parts of doing a skull right here. Oh yeah, look at that bad boy. This thing looks nasty, man. Really, we can call it good there, but I really want this thing to be super nasty. If I give this thing another five minutes of work, I very well could have the uh, best skull I've ever, ever tooled. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time trying to dig out some dimensions. So that was the detail I was missing come do is work this bevel a tiny bit more real quick come in here and you can always kind of use your hand and some of these pear shader tools to kind of mold a little bit better but there we go dude we got to add some cracks dude usually throw a couple down this way Now what I'm gonna do is get extra fancy and making it a little bit more wicked. So I'll come in here and basically do some kind of scratches just to give us a little bit more detail lines. Damn, son. I really like how this thing turned out. So that is how we do it. 